Here in the barn today, getting ready for Plow Day 2023, which will be this Saturday, April the 15th. I've got to get a few tractors out here. The, mainly the big one I got to get out is this John Deere 730 a diesel electric start and my Case 400 here. I'm going to try to use it this year as well. And uh, this Alice Chalmers WD 45, which has been problematic for me. I've uh, uh, plowed with it one time, disked with it a couple of times. Didn't really run it at all last year, but got it running here this winter and hope to use it. So you can see these here are tucked in the barn right now. Over here is my Oliver 70, and I think I've got it pretty much ready to go. I've changed the oil, checked all the fluid levels, and uh, it should do a good job. It's a beautiful tractor. And I've plowed with it in the past. I, I'll show you the plow that I have for it here in a second. As you know, a 70 does not have hydraulics, so you have to use a plow with a mechanical lift. But it's a good tractor, and uh, it'll be fun operating it for a little bit. This next tractor is my super powerful Farm All M, which I'll use here, I'll show you in a second, the plow that goes with it. But it has, of course, the Christmas tree valve on it, two-way hydraulics, not live but does uh, give you the ability to get the plow up and out of the field with hydraulics. And a very good tractor. The next tractor that I'm going to hope to use this year to plow with is a farm all M that I rescued and uh, too good really to scrap. I've got to go through it. This one over here I've already gone through, but this one I have not. I've got uh, the two-way valve on it. Finally got it working right have it hooked up to an old John Deere cylinder over here and uh, expect to use it with a plow that I have in the other barn here. So we'll see how that goes. Over here is another tractor that I hope to use for plow day. I haven't used it for a couple of years. It's my Farmall 450. It's got a wide front on it now. It's got the front weights on it, which are hard to find. And a very good tractor, it has torque amplifier course, that was a big feature back in the 50s that Farmall had that many didn't. You have to monkey with the uh, fast hitch here to get it to work right. Right now it's in the stationary position. So you can see here I need to move the, this arm down here, down to here. And the same thing over on the side. I move this arm here down to here. And then you have to make some adjustments underneath there to allow the drawbar or the whole apparatus to swing back and forth like this, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Again, I'll show you the plow for this in a second. Uh, we had problems with the priority valve on this, the hydraulics on this tractor and put a aftermarket high priority valve on it that's really not connected to the main hydraulic unit. And I'll we'll have to see how that works. I'm uh, skeptical that it's gonna allow me to raise the plow out of the ground and, and keep live, live power steering at the same time. But we'll see how that goes. Over here are the plows. So this first plow is the International 60 plow. And I use that with the Farm All M. I've also used it with this 450 in the past. But it's a very good plow, it turns over the ground well. I have a couple things on it that uh, I think are nice features. One are these weed hooks. I don't know if you've ever heard of what a weed hook does, but it's supposed to keep the trash down. It doesn't jam up in the um, uh, frame. This plow has a high frame anyway, so I don't think it would naturally do that, but uh, it does help. You don't really need it on the first bottom, so I only put two on a three bottom plow, three on a four bottom plow. Um, and uh, you'll see here when I show you the mechanical lift plow that was the forerunner of this, the little genius, how that, uh, they simplified a lot of things, especially in the hitch. The next plow is a plow that I've had for a few years now. I went out to Iowa to get this plow. Actually, I just wanted the cylinder off of it. It was a very rare cylinder, 
But I ended up taking a plow with me too because they wouldn't let me just take the cylinder off of it. I got it at an auction, on auction time. And I'll get it hooked up here in a second. And it, I match it up with my Oliver Super 77. Uh, it's a nice plow. It always does a good job on it. Things and uh, have an old John Deere style uh, cylinder on it as well. But yeah, it's a it's a good plow. Uh, I've got I put new tires on it, fixed the rims up. Uh, so I think it's a very workable plow now. Now this plow over here goes with the John Deere 730. It's a four bottom plow, an 812 plow if I know my numbers right. And uh, again, I have the weed hooks on it as you can see, and it has a guide. Uh, wheel on the side here that uh, helps you with depth control. Uh, 730 is supposed to have some sort of depth control, but <laughs> I've never found it to work really too well, so the guide wheel helps out. This next plow is an International 311 plow. It's a fast hitch plow, as you can see though, on the points on it. It's the one that'll go with a 450. Again, a couple of weed hooks on the thing and a guide, a, a depth wheel on the back. But uh, I took this plow pretty much apart and restored it uh, myself, painted it, put the decals on it, and it uh, should go pretty good. It's got Super Chief uh, mold boards, and uh, I think the cover boards I put on are new. This next plow is a John Deere, um, I forget the model number on this, so I'll have to look it up, but it's, it goes with my John Deere 630. And uh, it's again got a, a, a depth wheel on the side. Don't really have to have that with a three bottom, but I put it on anyway. I bought that out at Rantoul. And uh, uh, have a couple of weed hooks on this one too. Uh, this plow was more or less thrown in the deal when I got the, uh, the John Deere 630. So anyway, it's a, it plowed well last year. It's a number 810 plow. You might notice here that these, on both of these older style plows, John Deere uh, three-point plows, they've got these long uh, adjustment arms on them. And uh, that proved to be problematic because if the top link broke, those things could swing back up and stab you in the back. So they shortened them quite a bit for their newer model plows. But on these old ones, that's what you got. So you gotta watch out for that. I'm outside now with uh, looking at my Super 77. It's all ready to go. It's been greased and oiled and had the uh, hydraulic uh, levels checked. Uh, radiator's been checked. Tires are checked. Should be ready to go. Should, it's running pretty well, so it always is a good tractor to operate. Uh, it's got a, a couple of unusual things on it. Uh, one is this base mount weight here for the front. I don't really need that, but I think it looks cool, so I put it on there. I've also had problems in the past with the uh, replacement gas caps that you get from some of these aftermarket places. Not aftermarket, but supposedly places that specialize in Oliver parts. And uh, they build up pressure in the gas tank, and the tractor quits running. So I put an old style international gap cap uh, gas cap on this it's already it always works fine this has very convenient hydraulics uh, right here i don't think it was ever hydroelectric but it does have two different remote settings and uh, oliver is just a very pleasant tractor to drive it's next uh, plow i'm going to show you over here is uh, a little genius i just bought these out in illinois and got them for one money. I think I got them at a good price. This is one I actually think I'm going to use because it's uh, it's a little rougher than the other ones, and I, I uh, the other one that I got rather, and uh, I'm uh, I'm anxious to use it and see how it goes. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's a two-piece situation in terms of the mold board and the uh, shears shares rather, and it most modern plows have. Uh, a shin that goes on the mold board that where the wear points mainly are. You can see here how this one's been kind of welded up in different spots here to keep it uh, from wearing out. But I think it'll turn the ground over pretty well. We'll see how it goes. It's probably going to need some adjustments on it. The colder's looked a little low to me, but 
we'll see how that goes. Over in the old barn down, this is the uh, other little genius plow that I bought. It's, it's been restored to a high level, professionally painted. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I don't really think I want to use it at this point in time. It looks too good. Once I get them in the field, that's that brand new look disappears. But we'll see. I may do it anyway. It's a, but it looks to be completely in order and uh, has a little bit different types of colders on it. The the uh, disc type colders. Uh, that was, I guess, the idea behind that was you uh, you didn't really need a joiner with your plow. Uh, this would do the job uh, as both a colder and a joiner. As you can see here, the mechanical lift on a little genius plow is a pretty simple operation. And it simply pull this rope, trip it, and it'll go down. You get to the end of the field, pull it again, it'll raise it back up. And the big disadvantage with it, of course, is if you get stuck in the middle of the field and your <laughs> your tractor's spinning its wheels, and you can't, you need to get out of there. You can't just push the hydro hydraulic level down to, to raise it up you gotta you gotta get the plow moving and lift it so yeah that's don't think i'll use that plow but you never know over here is the first plow that i ever bought it's a john deere 55 abh plow in fact you can still see the lettering on it And this plow has been a very good plow for me. I don't know if it'll get out of the shed this year. It hasn't plowed for a couple of years. I probably ought to sell the thing, but uh, it's a very reliable plow and it's completely, it's got everything on it that it should have on it. I took the, um, I did take the joiners off, but I have them for it if needed. And uh, anyway, it's a, it, it is a wonderful plow. So maybe it'll get out of the barn, who knows. The next plow over here is a case plow that goes with that case 400. And I, I bought this for not a whole lot of money. It's pretty good. I've plowed with it just one time. And the thing I like about this thing is that the tail wheel com flips completely around. And uh, instead of the thing pulling off to one side when you're trying to back it up, uh, you can guide this thing right to wherever you want to put it. And that's a really nice feature. I don't know why more companies didn't do that. Uh, maybe Case had a patent on the thing. But I have the proper cylinder with this plow, too. It's a um, it's a Case cylinder. And uh, I think I got two of these. Anyway, I, uh, I like the way this thing is built because it allows you to adjust your depth really easily. Also have, for all my plows, I have the proper uh, clevis. It goes with each plow. Now this plow here is another International 60 plow that I literally just pulled out of the junkyard and worked on it, fixed it up, plowed with it last year. It did a very nice job. And I intend to use this with the uh, uh, Farm All In, not the super powerful one, but with the other one. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I put the weed hooks on it. It's got a couple of, uh, it's got the disc, um, uh, colders on it and uh, I just noticed one of them looks loose I have to work on that yeah that's not good I have to get that fixed I uh, spent a little time last fall kind of trying to get the latch to work properly and I never could get it so I made this piece here to kind of hold the plow up without the cylinder being on it so hopefully I can get that unloosened pretty quickly when I get the cylinder on the thing this plow over here should be a three-bottom Alice Chalmers uh, uh, snap coupler plow. But uh, I found that my in the ground we have here, my Alice Chalmers WD-45 had a hard time pulling it. And I didn't do much plowing with this. But I hope to get it out this spring and at least get this mold board scoured up a little bit better than what they are right now. Uh, I have the other piece for the plow laying over here. Anyway, I bought another one of these for not much money, so I have parts for them. But uh, it's a plow that, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that traction boost system is supposed to work well, but I at least I haven't learned how to master it yet. Some of you people out there that are into WD-45s, you could probably help me with, uh, with how to 
operate that thing properly. This tractor over here is a Case VAC. I've had it in my videos, and I spent some time with this this winter, uh, getting the brakes right. And uh, they, they somebody put the wrong, when they restored this tractor, they put the wrong uh, oil pressure gauge in the thing. It should only be a zero to 30 oil pressure gauge, and they had a zero to 60. So it appeared like there was no oil pressure in the thing when I was trying to use it. And so I always babied the thing. And then I read that that was a problem. So put the right oil pressure gauge in, and now I have perfect oil pressure with it. That's That was a revelation. <laughs> it only took me 10 years to figure that out. And here's the plow that goes with it. This is a plow that they sold a lot of. And uh, it's a case plow, two bottom, and uh, that's about all this tractor can handle. The, uh, it has a sort of a unique breakaway system. It, this here will pull up like this if you hit something, and the, the tractor then pulls this out of the back here, and the whole thing just goes forward, leaves the plows in the ground. So, um, Kind of an interesting way to do it. I've never had it break away like that. I think my dad had a tractor like this, and it may have done that a couple times with him, but uh, he used to pull that thing out of there and use that as kind of a, a lifting device. <laughs> uh, you could wrap a chain around the end of it and lift posts out of the ground, things like that. So anyway, this case is a, should be a good tractor. It, I plowed with it at a plow day last fall, and it did really well, so I'm anxious to see how it does this year. And the last tractor that I'll uh, show you here is my John Deere 630. And I need to get it out of the shed here, clean it up a little bit. It kind of got dirty over the winter sitting in here. There's coons that roam around up here in the rafters. And I, I think they took turns crapping on it. Maybe a buzzard or two got in here. But this tractor, I think we finally have it running the way it should. Disked a little bit with it last fall. Did seem, seem to do fine. Plowed with it in the spring. Seemed to do fine. Uh, but a good tractor, and it's set up now to pull that three-bottom plow. It should do it pretty easily. So we'll get that out of the barn here in a bit and get it running and get it serviced and ready to go for Saturday. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll have a video, maybe a couple of them, of the plow day on Saturday, and then we'll have another one up here later in the year. Uh, uh, when this upper ground dries out a little bit better. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching my videos, and God bless you.